Hi there, it's been quite a while, but I'm back now and I have another video. Um, recently I went out to see Alice in Wonderland and I didn't think it was good. I think I paid too much attention to the fashion of it and the actual story. And when you notice the characters and the clothes as two separate entities in a movie, I think then you know it really has failed. Uh, but on other news, I have a bit more of a serious topic to discuss, and that is religion. Uh, just recently, I had um, uh, a friend post a um, message on Facebook, and it was a video of some sort of Christian or Catholic view on um, contraceptions. And basically, they completely oppose it because they believe that, um, well, sex has to lead to babies. Sex, babies, nothing in between. You shouldn't control it or prevent life from happening. Now, I understand that, but I mean, this was more of a, a better reason to have such a view a few thousand years ago when it was a necessity to have a big tribe because then you could beat other tribes. R right now, um, human civilization has come to such a point that there is so many people now, and it's important to keep populations in check. N not only for your own society, but for the sake of the world. We talk about such things as um, global warming, uh, too much usage of crops, uh, bulldozing land, uh, cutting forests. Why do you think this is all happening? Because of increase of consumption. And consumption is because of this large population. Now, it's not a new thing that people have been using contraceptives. They existed for thousands of years. People have been using um, bladders of sheep as condoms. Uh, women in Egypt used to put dung into their vagina in order to form sort of like a spermicide. Um, uh, women even in the days knew different herbs and uh, not veg vegetables, anything that you could use to either prevent pregnancy or prevent um, um, the embryo from implanting and so on. Uh, this was knowledge passed out through generations and I think this is an important aspect of um, our lives because we're able to control such a thing. I mean, the, in the, the Christianity websites, they mention it as um, fertility, like we see it as a bad thing, like we prevent it from happening, but it's not necessarily a bad thing, just that we choose to when do we utilize it the most. It's one of the aspects of our lives that we can control, like we can control when we eat, when we sleep, <clears throat> what are we going to do with our lives, what we study, what we think about. I mean, of course, things pop into our heads that we might not think about consciously, or some people don't have the resources to eat anytime they want. And of course, there's such a big variety. And I don't think sex should be, um, I don't think sex should be the, um, not opposition, exception of that rule. And therefore, I think it's a very important aspect of our lives. And it, this, it isn't just for procreation or furthering our species. It's also important for bonding and for our own simple pleasures in life. Why is it so wrong to have a simple pleasure? Why does something have to have always a big meaning behind it? Sex sometimes can be just sex for the body. The body is an important part of us, and I think if we deny it uh, its pleasure, we're denying a part of ourselves. That's why I don't agree with restraint. Restraint is a very hard thing to do on the body. N not only that, it um, not only that it um, hin hinders our potential or creativity, but it also it, it creates negativity in ourselves. We become negative because we don't get the what we crave for. And in order to accept it, we have to understand it. We have to know what we ourselves want, and then we'll be able to achieve it. Now, what religion, religion poses a lot of restraints. Uh, no homosexuality, no sex before marriage, no sex without babies. Everything is told what to do for you. 
these are aspects of life that do not hurt other people. It's not like murder or robbery where someone gets hurt or someone's money gets stolen. This is an aspect of your own personality, your personal life, what you choose to do at that moment, what is best for you. I mean, it would be insane to think that the only times you would have sex is when you would want to have babies. Because then you would have sex like two or three times. Or, if, well, if you wanted to have a lot of sex, you would have like 20 babies in the end. It, it's not a good quality of life for the child. So in the, in the end, you're being um, responsible. If you have so many children, you, you can't provide them all with the quality of life that you want to. In a way, you're being unfair to all those people. And you're being unfair to the society itself. Therefore, it's up to you to decide what you want to do with it. That uh, an organization whose leader is actually a celibate, so how would he have any idea what sex is about if he hasn't experienced it himself and always been in restraint of it? I think it's a very uh, a delicate topic that needs to be carefully looked at all the time because it's important for the society to realize the uh, complications if we deny our needs. Um, that was nice to get off my chest, I tell you that. Um, uh, other than that, there's been some discussion about uh, abortion and gay people, which I, I really don't want to get into now, but I believe that um, homosexuality should definitely be allowed. In what sense can God not allow people to love each other. I mean, that's, uh, I don't see the point of it. I don't see how can love be forbidden between two people who are happy about it, while a loveless marriage can be allowed. And there's so many aspects of it that don't, don't make much sense. You know, they always, uh, like if you quote, um, something from the Bible, they always say like, oh, you misinterpret it, oh, you have to see it another way. Then in what way do you have to see it? Like, no matter what you would say, they would say, oh, it's something else. Oh, you don't see it in the right way. Well, what is the right way? How can it be wrong? Okay, fine. Then use the uh, excuse that um, people's words are false, you know, it's only God's true way. But then you yourself have to know what it is. You can't tell some, you can't let some person, no matter if it's a priest or just a homeless guy on the street, tell you what to think through it. it. And why do you need the mediators and the church to tell you what to do? If you yourself have the connection with God, then you yourself should be able to accomplish all of those things that a, a priest can do. How, how is that fair? How is one thing more um, higher than you are in that level? It's a uh, it's, it's, it's not that fair, and you always go in circular arguments, and you can't really get them to answer everything, and want everything is answered in political, a political way, which is avoiding the initial question, and just going around it, around it, and around it. I think everyone has, has the right to choose what they want to believe in, and it's up to them, but it's not up to them to force those views onto others or to uh, bring down other people and their religion or their beliefs or their sexuality or anything like that. In the end, it's up to the individual to decide something like that, which does not affect others in a negative way, such as murder or theft, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, well, I think that's all I have to say for now. Uh, if I get any more thoughts in there, I'll let you know. So, until next time.